everyone i am dr b swishankari assistant professor of physics sfr college for women swagasi today we are going to see a topic on x ray diffraction the learning objectives today we are going to see are the characterization studies which are possible with the xrd and its instrumentation next the analyzing the factors then how to do xrd calculation introduction here we are going to see what is the motivation behind this x-ray diffraction studies x-ray diffraction is used to obtain the structural information about crystalline solids crystalline solids means example we are going crystals in the lab means uh, that we can say it is a crystalline solid what is the use of it uh, means it is useful in biochemistry to solve the 3d structures of complex biomolecules then it acts as a bridge between physics chemistry and biology importance of x-ray diffraction x-ray diffraction is important for solid state physics biophysics medical physics chemistry and biochemistry then how diffraction works why you are going to see about diffraction means the basic principle behind x-ray diffraction studies is diffraction so here we are going to see how diffraction works this concept has been given by person named bragg and we are saying it is bragg's law so if you see the um, uh, diagram means uh, there are lattice planes when the xrd falls on these atomic lattice planes they are diffracted so that has been explained by bragg's law you see the last line by varying wavelength and observing the diffraction patterns so we are going to pass the xrd over the lattice planes and by varying the wavelength uh, we are going to observe the diffraction pattern and we are going to gain information about lattice spacing from the lattice spacing we can draw the structure of the crystalline samples so this is the experimental part so here if you see means the simplest instrument is a powder camera which gives maximum resolution and is good for low sample quantity here mainly the camera used for in this uh, apparatus setup is d by scherer camera for x-ray analysis here and then if you see means we are passing high uh, we are passing x-rays from x-ray tube and it is made to fall on a screen and then it is made to fall on the crystal sample and the pattern is collected on the photographic plate so this is a, a simple schematic diagram of an x-ray diffraction analysis then analyzing diffraction patterns okay uh, in, in the diffraction pattern in the director we will get a graph like this what is the meaning of this uh, graph how we have to made analysis with this graph how we have to predict the structure of the crystalline sample with this diffraction pattern graph here there are steps so this is a model diffractogram we can see so the first steps are consider the following areas on the diffractogram the diffraction pattern is labeled with a sample name and other information to the experiment this sample is ground cal here uh, it is an example of a cubic silicon carbide the sample was randomly mounted using backpack technique the diffraction pattern was prepared and the steps were in uh, degrees and counts were collected at each step the vertical axis records x-ray intensity so here vertical axis stands for x-ray intensity and then the horizontal axis here the horizontal axis means the that we have represented as 2 theta in degrees the horizontal axis records angles in degrees 2 theta low angles large d spacings lie to the right then this is one of the x-ray peaks so here we are having so many peaks that we say it is x-ray peaks it happens to be the one with the smallest angle measured as 23.04 degree so if you see means corresponding to the peak height what is the intensity you have to measure okay then we have to use this bragg's law with n equal to 1 and what is the wavelength we are supplying wavelength 1.454 and then we can find out the corresponding degrees 2 theta what is the corresponding d spacing to the 2 theta and we can express it in armstrong there is a, uh, there are so many peaks uh, at 39.37 degree 2 theta so if you put calculation for these and all means uh, it corresponds to a d spacing of 2.287 armstrong there is a largest peak on the pattern also 
it actually extends several times the height of the image. Many factors affect the intensity of a given peak. Some of these factors are intrinsic to the mineral under study. Some of these factors are peculiar to the way a specimen is mounted in the diffractometer. We know lambda, the wavelength 1.54 Armstrong and we assume n equal to 1. We can measure 2 theta from the diffraction pattern divided by 2, these values become theta. That leaves us with an equation with one unknown d. Then analyzing diffraction patterns. Data is, so as I already said, what you are going to perform, what are the steps means for analyzing the diffraction pattern means data is taken from a full range of angles from the graph. For a simple crystal structures, diffraction patterns are easily recognizable. Then we have to find the phase problem. Then only intensities of diffracted beams are measured. That is the peaks only you have to take. Then the phase info uh, is phase info is last and must be inferred from data. For complicated structures, diffraction patterns at each angle can be used to produce a 3D electron density map. Then intensity of diffracted beams. Uh, from these intensity of diffracted beams, what you have seen uh, in the previous slide, uh, from that slide, what and all we can predict out means the polarization factor, then structure factor, multiplicity factor, Lorentz factor, absorption factor, temperature factor. So these and all the factors you have to consider also and these are the factors that are going to help to find out the structure of crystalline samples. Okay, after finding the structure of the crystalline samples where we have to record these answers means for most materials the peaks and their intensities are documented using JCPDS files and ICDD files. So if you want to I refer what is the crystal structure for me sample means you can just go through it this uh, take the jcpds file or icdd file if you get it means we can find out the crystalline structure so here for most materials the peaks and their intensity are documented isn't it uh, another thing i have to include is uh, what is the use of this x-ray reflectivity means to measure the thickness and roughness and density not only crystal structure but you can measure the thickness reference roughness and density also the density how we can measure means the density of the material being measured determines the vertical angle below which there is total external reflection and above which internal reflection occurs due to x-ray penetration the appearance of the finely spaced interference fringes is determined by both the thickness and the interfacial roughness of a layer the amplitude of oscillation is also additive of indicative of the density contrast between layers the key to analysis of similar to XRD, we are having XPR also. The key to analysis of XPR data is a modeling software used to fit the data. The software applies a generic algorithm to fit the data while allowing the roughness, thickness and density numbers to vary independently until a best fit is obtained. The measurements have verified the accuracy of the fitting algorithms. The example above is nominal. The fit shows excellent agreement between the experiment data and the fitted modeled data. The model shows being the thick oxide layers on top. The roughness also we can find out and the density also we can find out. There are so many uses of XRD analysis for a crystalline sample and all that have been documented if you are finding new samples uh, crystal structure means uh, that will also be documented in jcpds and icdd files so these are the advantages of uh, xrd and it is uh, very useful to many fields not only in physics in biophysics and in medical technology etc thank you